So it's now time for the Wednesday Wrestling War. Woo hoo! What for, was that? I don't know. That was weak. Was this is lot. the first Wednesday Wrestling War of 2020. Now, granted, I said to everybody last time that I wasn't doing uh, Wednesday Wrestling War when it comes to both shows not being at war. The first one, uh, AEW took off. Mm-hmm. The NXT had like a little Christmas show. Yeah. So I didn't do that. So the next week over, AEW had their New Year's show. The first one of the year, but NXT had their best of. So I'm like, but this time it's the, we're here. Head to head in the game. Head to head the game, and this is where we're going to start off at. So, of course, most likely in the future when you guys hear these segments, me and Primetime are going to be the ones that's going to be doing these. Mm-hmm. Say, yeah. Yeah, they scheduled to join us, I'm saying. But, you know, uh, Q-Flow for the rookie, did, uh, my co-host, did have to leave. So me and Primetime going old school, and me, him, and Lady Sketch is going to be here, uh, you know, say chiming in. So you ready, Prime? Let me go. Yep, All right, so this is from Wednesday, January 8th, the first official one. Let's get 2020 kicked off. So we start off with Rhea Ripley coming to the ring and letting everybody know that uh, about her man. And I'm playing. <laughs> I'm just sorry to see a picture of, you know, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just being I don't know. So let everybody know, you know, uh, how she won a championship. And uh, it was a great match with her and Shayna Baszler. But Tony Storm comes out. And <sighs> Tony Storm. Let's people know that, you know, I did beat you for the, uh, what was it, the, the NXT UK Women's Championship, right? Yep. And she did beat her in the Mayan Classic, right? No, she. Yeah. Did she? Tony Storm fought EO, but I don't know if they fought in the Mayan Classic or not. I don't think so. Okay, well, yeah, but look, cause she did mention how she beat her twice. Yeah. So, before Rhea came over, over to AC, she was all in the UK stuff. Yes. So, that's where all this is coming from, because people didn't watch UK. So, she says, so at Worlds Collide, which is, I don't, because last time, last time at Worlds Collide was that NXT versus NXT UK versus 205 Live thing. Mm-hmm. This year's NXT versus NXT UK, and it's taking place of TakeOver. Okay, so, it's, so when is Worlds Collide? The night before the Royal Rumble. Okay, night before the Royal Rumble. Okay, gotcha. All right. So yes, yeah, she she wants a, t- a championship match with Rhea Ripley, and then all of a sudden we get the whole promo line comes Hell out. Oh yeah. We get the Io Shirai. We get the Bianca Belair. We get the Candice LeRae. They all come out and you know uh, say the piece of why they should be the NXT Women's uh, Champion. So then. What do we do, Prime? We got some little long coming out. Exactly. We got some little six man tag team match player. Lord Jesus. So it's uh, Rhea Ripley. To, uh, make sure I get these. Make sure I get the teams right. It's Rhea, yeah. Tony oh. Storm, and Candice LeRae. Yeah. Versus Kaylee Ray, Io Shirai, and Bianca Belair. And Bianca Belair, absolutely right. So yeah. Um. For what I've seen of the match, I didn't get to see too much of the matchup. Uh, decent matchup here with Candice LeRae pulling out the win over Bianca Belair taking the pin. Yes. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, it was kind of like a jealous. It was like a jealousy thing though, because you know how every every tag team had miscommunication and mm-hmm. EO and yeah. Bianca got into it. So oh, I thought that Rhea Ripley put it there. You know what? She did. She did. Okay, so I I see once again I messed up. So, yeah, uh, so I'm actually interested to see Rhea uh, face Tony Storm, which I think this is when Rhea, Rhea gets her win back. And I yeah. stu- I'm still yeah. saying this is still going to be the year of, you know, uh, Ripley and Bel Air. Let like y'all know that right now. Um, So now the Dusty Classic is back. So I like the Dusty Classic. It comes back every year. Mm-hmm. And this has to be the first Dusty Classic. I don't even know. Half the teams is on here. Well, I think this one in the first one. It's probably, probably. Well, well, the first one was uh the Balor and Samoa Joe. Yes. And you saw it. You was like, did they win it all? Because you had what was it, Rhino and Bull Dempsey as a team? No, Rhino and uh Ben Corbin, I think. Yeah. Rhino and Ben Corbin. Which is stupid. So, the first matchup we got is Imperium taking on the Forgotten Sons. In a quick, like, nine-minute matchup, which I have to say was actually a pretty decent Forgotten Sons matchup. 
Yeah, I just like Imperium, honestly. So, <laughs> so but you ever That's gave like me, favoritism. You, you ain't came out with the Forgotten Sons in this matchup? Nah, I forgot them. No pun intended, but I actually did because I didn't care. So, who was the... Okay, um... <clears throat> I'll tell you, all they want is Jackson Riker to go on his own. And they're trying to f- f- figure out a way to cut Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake. Yeah, I don't know why they, put him, why they put him with them if they already knew they wanted him to be a solo. Uh-huh. With 2K members. <laughs> yeah, 2K, uh, the only ones. So, uh, next up, Austin Theory taking on, was it, uh, Joaquin Wild, 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 a.k.a. DJZ. That's who that is? Yeah. Damn. Well, first of all, I knew, I, I found out about Austin Theory when I went to the Evolve show, the, the 10th anniversary of Evolve yeah, show. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, I heard about him, but that's the first time I actually seen him wrestle. Yeah, and he 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 had a real he had a real good match. Like I said, I was there live for the 10th anniversary show. I got a shirt and everything. So oh, you was there when that girl almost killed herself too. When you said what? <laughs> that girl almost killed herself in them chairs. Is that yeah? Chairs? Yo, she drew. I was like, well, only in Philly, right? Uh, yeah. so Austin Theory picks up the win here. Uh, I like Austin Theory. You know, they, I think they're going to start pushing because, you know, every time he's on, they talk about how young he is. He's like 21 or 22. Yeah, he's very talk young. about how young he is. The youngest so. evolved champion there is, right? That there was, right? Yeah, so they, they apparently see big things in them. Uh, next Dusty Classic uh, match, we have the Undisputed Era taking on Gallus. I don't even know who Ga- Who is Gallus? Gallus is uh, Mark Coffey and Wolfgang. Uh, oh, that's that's and they they got call another partner is uh, Joe Coffee. Joe, oh, Joe Coffee. Okay, it's, it's the Coffee Brothers. Yeah. Okay, I know they call some guys. But the Coffee Brothers are not the ones in the team. It's one Coffee Brother and one other guy. Gotcha. In the team. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Very, very, very decent match, but the crowd just didn't care. Yeah, because like that's the that's the thing about it. The UK teams. They can wrestle good all they want. It's like they're not gonna really get invested in them if they don't know who they are. So, okay. you know that's the thing. Cause I'm like, cause honestly, the big wrestling fan I am, and you know, I'm not even gonna blame it on time. I just don't watch NCUK. There's no appeal to me other than Mark Andrews to watch UK. To be honest with you. Yeah, I watched it like when it first came on, but then I was like, ugh, I'm because right. it, it was coming on at a steady day, then they start changing days and that come on like every other day of the week, and they change it every week. And I'm like, all right, that's getting too much. Yeah, I don't even know when it comes on now. They like the two or five live of, of NXT UK, NXT. Fair enough. So uh, now we got uh, so Giant comes out for the promo, right? Yes. There's a Finn Balor. Oh, wait. You know what? Wait. I Before this... Finn Balor challenged Johnny Gargano. Okay, we, we'll talk about that first. I'll talk about that first. Yeah. But, yeah. What did you, you want to talk about first? I want to talk about this thing that made me upset. It's Kushida's partner in the tournament, the Dusty Rose Classic. Who is it? Alex Shelley is his partner. Mr. Triple so Threat himself. Oh, my God. Mr. Triple Threat. Th- First of all, is he signed to NXT? I know he works there as a as a um, coach. But yeah, because uh, I, all uh, I do is see Alex Shelley at House of Hardcore in Triple Threat matches. I, oh my! I, That's why I call so Mr. Triple close. Threat. I really want them to do it. I really want them to do the Motor City Machine Guns for at least one stint. At least have them have a stint from like the beginning of the year till. The Royal Rumble show or something. Just oh wait 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 Oh shit! So okay, you know what? You can't get the most of the machine guns back together then. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like I really wish that they would have did it, but oh, because God. if they had did the most of the machine guns, the NXT brought they went did they win it all? Most of the machine yes. guns versus undisputed era. Shit, I paid good money for that. 
Yeah, man. I was so I was oh my even though they was the tag team him and Kushida, it was like you can't just bring up Alex Shelley, one of the best tag team Alright, I'm a, I'm a, no, no, right, one man. of the best tag team wrestlers there is and not bring up Chris Saban. Yes, that's like that's like, that's like bringing over Matt Jackson and not Nick. It's like, well, what's the point? You're right. You you will bring up one of the other their package deal. Um, even so, though they are good singles wrestlers, I I'm still hmm. like, but this is a tag team tournament. You can't though. They should have just had a mystery team all together and then. Oh, you're right. So close. So close. Maybe next year. Yeah, well, I'm so or maybe even later this year. So I doubt it. But who you know, who knows? Who knows? So, uh, we got uh, as a Finn Balor, Gogano, yep. and, and challenging Balor, or Balor challenging Gogano, and a match take over Portland. That should be a good one. Do you think do you think uh, Finn Balor will kick Gargano to the rail again, right or to the uh, season for jobbers? I hope they don't, they've been using that move a lot though. I'm honestly. like I'm like yeah, it's trying to get redundant. Like the first time it was cool, then when they did it with Keith Lee, it was cool. Then they they started doing it every week. Somebody get kicked into the crowd and knock over a row of fans. Like, all right, now y'all kind of just doing it too much. First off, Keith Lee pouncing Adam Cole to the crowd yeah, yeah. was fucking nice. great. And unexpected as well. <laughs> so it was great. Uh, me and him is taking on Caden Carter, which in, in reality, I don't like that name for her. Yeah, I don't know why uh, they changed it. They changed a lot of people's names, though. Caden Carter. She's the one who was Lacey Lane in the Man Classic. Mm. Em- em- Ember Moon 2.0. Po- but you can't really, uh, with the, I guess you don't want another Lacey. You don't, but it's like, I'm not Caden. C- C- see, I'm Caden okay. Carter is weird, though. Caden Carter. I'm like, okay. It's pretty weird. Well, she dominated the majority of the match, believe me, honest with you. And then she goes on the top rope, and then me and him catches her with a protect your neck out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which one y'all like better? To protect, to protect your neck. Especially I like the way uh, I like the way Mar- Marl says it. Don't you just love it? Or do you like the soul food? Uh, soul food sounds like soul less food. urban. All right. <laughs> like, soul food speaks more to her, but I guess I guess protection. I don't know. But uh, like but it's not it's, it's not it's not protect your neck. It's protect your neck. I, I like hey everybody, she's better. urban. Everybody, she's urban. That's that's basically what it keeps screaming. <laughs> what, what, what 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 protect your neck or urban or, urban 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 or like, soul food? All right, all right. The, the no protect your neck. Well, me and you may do it. She go out there. She go out there with the bag. I hate the baggy ass pants she be wearing though. She's wearing Tim's. Everybody, look, urban. She's from Oakland. She used to be in the in the rice. She's from urban. the original look. Oakland. Yeah, she. Uh, <laughs> She did go out there and blast the coat of car with a face wash with some Tim's on. No. Some straight butters. I just, I can't. Me and him is hood. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what they want, though. And it's just like, no, bro, that's what she uh, is. They playing it up. It's the same thing with Naomi, where she was rolling her neck and popping her fingers and all that shit for a minute. Like, all right, y'all. All right, we get it. But all right. Uh, But after, after the match, match though. One of uh, look, I love who debuted, but I thought it was like one of the worst attacks I've seen. Yeah, like, oh, I'm gonna push you down now. You get out. <laughs> I'm getting out of the ring. Chelsea Green like, comes in the ring, and you're like, "Who is this girl?" And Chelsea Green coming there, and she puts that like gives a, a half push to Kate Carter, and me and has to like jump in front of her to, to take the brunt of it. And they fall out the ring, and then she just looks at him, like leaves and walks up the ramp, and then you see uh, Robbie E up there. Rob Stone. Rob Stone <laughs> lost all his muscle. I'm just like, first of all, I was like, who the hell is this? Because one, I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, because he don't got the pumped up hair no more. And he don't, and the Chelsea Green was looking fine. I was like, first of all, no, no disrespect to Chelsea Green. I seen her in the Mayon Classic. Mm-hmm. I was just like, "Who the hell is this girl?" <laughs> and I was like, "That's Zack Ryder's girlfriend." Who? Yeah, Chelsea Green. Does she, not, so does she oh, get any shit. points for being on Raw he two weeks in a row? Yeah. Wait, wait, what'd you, what'd you say? Uh, prop time. Does she get any extra extra points with NXT people for being on Raw, or they don't they don't care? I don't know. No, 
I don't know. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't her up to, for me to find that out yet. Not, not on. I'm talking about not on here, but I'm talking about like in in the NXT quote universe. Like, oh, she was on Raw. She wrestled Charlotte Flair, and then I give her no extra. No, no. she was local okay. talent then. <laughs> but now I'm like, oh, Chelsea, you um, you you, you all right? Then I did check, but she was all right. Main event time. No one can turn the shot for the North American title. We have Keith Lee, <laughs> Dominic Dajakovic, Cameron Grimes, and Damian Priest. Mm-hmm. The fatal four way matchup. So, as you can expect, Swole Theo, as my wife calls him. He is Swole Theo. He sounds just like Theo. I'm sorry. <laughs> Swole, he's he, Swole Thea. It does look like Michael Jawan Warner. <laughs> uh, had a good matchup here, and it did it did that shot again, mm-hmm. where he creeps up like f- f- from behind do you somebody. Think they started to do that too much too. Uh, they always do that in important matches, but yeah, well, that's like the third time, right? Third or fourth time he did no, it. No, uh, it's it's about second or third time. But the thing is, it's like you don't need that in every Keith Lee match. Because they, they did it with him and Leo Rush was a team, the Finn Balor thing, and then this one, like, I can't, is that, you think that's his thing now? I mean, they want to make it his thing, kind of like the Lars Sullivan thing, but I'm like, oh, but, but I'm just saying, but honestly, you're going to just wear it out too much. So, uh, Keith Lee had some very uh, power moves in this matchup, including the power bomb, uh, what was it? I don't know if David Priest is trying to go for a hurricane run or something, but he he catches him, and he's like swinging him around, taking out Dajakovic and uh, and Cameron yeah, Ryan. Yeah. And then and there was one he like power bombs uh uh Damian Priest on Dajakovic to break up the pin. It, it, it was a it was, it was a lot of action, a good fatal four way matchup, and yeah. people are clearly behind Lee. Yeah, but that spirit bomb he hit was like oh. Yeah, because he, he, he was like beautiful. He hit down grounds, correct? Yes. Yeah. He hit it and he like hit it like he just launched. He like he about die when he hit it. Yeah. <laughs> and Keith Lee wins the matchup, and Keith Lee uh goes on to face Roderick Strong. I don't know if it's going to be at Worlds Collide. Uh, I think it's in two. They say in two weeks, and I think Worlds Collide is in two weeks, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they ain't specify unless, unless I went to because the, the question is, will they give Keith Lee a North American? Because t- I really think Keith Lee's in line to win the the NXT championship. I think that he'll lose it by. I think they'll do this the same way. They, oh, I'm not sure actually. I'm pretty. I know they want to push Keith Lee to the main title. But I don't know how, what they're going to do to hold him over, so they might give it to him until Mania or until, like, the, you know, upcoming weeks. Uh-huh. You're right. But, uh, we'll have to see how they do it. Yeah, we'll see right on that one. So now let's move on to AEW. So, uh, AEW uh, goes head-to-head and... Uh, we uh right now we are in Memphis or somebody like Memphis Legends. We got Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, and Jim Ross on there. But then they have Memphis Pro Wrestler Legend Dave Brown. I'm not big into Memphis wrestling, so I don't re- recall who Dave Brown is. Like I said, if it ain't Jerry, yeah, Lyle, I know they honored a lot of people, but I literally don't know who. Barely none of the people was. The only people I knew that they honored Rock and Roll Express and Brian Christopher. It's the only two people I knew. Yeah, they, so. there you go. Uh. So AEW starts off just like AEW starts off any fucking other week with a tag team match. But look, one thing about AEW, if I got a nitpick, is the t- bro. It's like WCW. They all start off with a cruiserweight. I'm like, it starts off with a tag team match every week, dude. The only time it didn't start with a tag team match is when he had was it uh, Ray Phoenix going up against. Um, Nick Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Jackson. That's just the only single match. I was like, because they couldn't help themselves. But we got Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega taking on Private Party, Mark Quinn, and Isaiah Cassidy. Uh, Private Party! So, first of all, you already know I'm a fan of Private Party. I've been trying to get my wife to check out 
a one complete match from Private Party because they are really good at what they do. They are good, but they're starting to do this one thing that I don't like. Which uh, is? What's the, which one is it? Isaiah Cassidy. Like, every time he takes a bump, he screams loud like a little girl. He shrieks. He does do that. So, like, at first, he do, he only did it once a match, and it was okay, but now he's starting to, like, overly do it. Is it like that shriek? Remember when the Bludgeon Brothers was beating beat up that jobber? Yeah, and they just put like him, that. Yeah, yeah, and they put him up in the power box, and he was like, <laughs> he did that, did that high <laughs> And everybody was like, what? And he got over for, like, a week for that scream. Yeah, um, it's just like that. Just exactly like that, but it's, like, more than once a match. But, gotcha. Uh, yeah, but during the match, though, uh, Omega and Hangman show signs of not communicating good. So, uh-huh. you know, they kind of miscommunicate and stuff. But then they did this nice move. You know the, the buckshot lariat, right? When he flips over the rope and do the clothesline? Yeah. So they caught Isaiah Cassidy in it. One, uh, Hangman did a clothesline, and Kenny Omega hit him in the back with a V-trigger at the same time. Whoa! That was nasty. So, yeah. They did that, then they picked them up for a one-way danger, and they finished them off. Okay, I'm about to say, that you was, don't kick out of that. Yeah, that was nice. And then um, backstage, Neville had Michael Nakazawa, which is one of Kenny Omega's best friends, and the Brutalizer. <laughs> and it was kind of weird, though, because it was like, Omega was like, come on, come on, Paige, just go get him. Come on, let's go get him. And then he ran to the back, and Paige was like, I don't want really to feel like it. So he just like... <laughs> didn't do it. He didn't mm-hmm. run to the back. He was just like, oh, I'm going to just stay here. Gotcha. That's like last week. Last week, after they won their match, Cody came out and they was all celebrating. They were like, come on, Paige. Come on to the ring. He was like, nah, I'm not going to the ring with y'all. I'm going to stay up here. Why I'm at. Yeah, he ended up grabbing a beer. Wow. He, and I know he grabbed the beer for somebody at like ringside. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> There's so many memes on that. <laughs> they, they put the Family Matters uh, song because I guess when they introduced him, he turned to the camera. He was like, oh. Did a little smile. So, yeah. Oh, well, that's just kind of funny. Uh, Brandy Rose is now on commentary for the next bout, which is the AEW Women's Champion. Yeah, yeah Rio and Chris Statlander. Uh, obviously, well, not obviously, but I think this match was very overbooked for no reason, <laughs> no reason at all. In the crowd, you got um, you got Akara Shida and Britt Baker in the crowd. Then. During the match, you had Awesome Kong and that other female that's with Brandy come out, and uh-huh. they just look in, and now they're trying to just get Brandy. They're trying to get Chris Statlander to join their group. She don't want to join, so now they want to cost her the match. And like in the middle of the match, randomly, Brandy comes down to the ring, and they got this dude. His name is Doctor Luther. Oh god! <laughs> he like randomly just pops up, uh-huh. and. Uh, they don't do a good job at letting you know who these people are that you, know, that you don't know yet. Like, the few people that they have come on, that people don't know, they, they have not done a good job at uh, informing you on who they are. But Kind of like the Butcher, the yeah. Blade, the Bunny? Yeah, the Butcher, the Blade, and the Bunny, and um, uh, the Dark Order when they first appeared. Like, they didn't even, they didn't even get them a name yet. They was like, who are, are these... Are these who I it's think they sex are? Cult. Uh, who are these guys? It was like, yeah, like, we don't know who they are either. But if that was, if I had to choose one thing they had to work on, that's one of them, and then the women's division, and then the less tag matches too. Uh huh. <laughs> but yeah, Riho won with a, with a roll up because uh, she got distracted by all that chaos going on the outside. First of all, I think it's time to tie off of Rio. I mean, I think they would, but I don't know who they're going to give it to. Because at first, I thought they was going to give it to Britt Baker. But now, it's like, nah, we don't you know, want Britt Baker to have it. But you know what? Britt Baker is not really impressing me in the ring, though. Yeah, she's... It's like... Because they, when, they when they first built the up, they were like, oh, Britt Baker, she's going to carry our division. And I guess they seen Britt Baker in the ring. They was like, oh, Britt, uh, real. Britt, Dr. Ooh, Britt Baker kind of reminds me... The way she wrestles, it, it, it screams... 2010 Diva. You know what I'm saying? Oh. 
And I'm just I like, would say 2012 at least. Okay, yeah, I'm about to say, but it, it screams it because the way she does the clothesline, the way she, ah, I'm like, oh, no. But I, <laughs> she I, hit the ropes like Kelly Kelly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She had, oh I, I, can't, I hate the way Kelly Kelly used to run the ropes, man. I'm just like, what? Kelly Kelly, the ropes gave no give when Kelly Kelly was running them ropes. I'm like, how the hell she like, passed? She ain't even, like, she, she went and then leaned on him for a little bit. She's like, oh, hi, guys. All right, I'm going. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. We got, um, we got a little segment going on right now. Sam versus Christopher Daniels, actually. Uh, <coughs> this is... Hold I on. Don't say First of all, uh, it's the Spanish uh, guy, Sam. Sammy Guevara. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. The Spanish guy, uh-huh. uh, Sammy Guevara. But no, this match is, I don't want to say it's unnecessary, but it's like the way that this match came about. As you know, a couple of weeks ago, Chris Daniels botched his move, so, and now he's like, oh, do I still got it anymore? I'm like 50 years old, and I don't know if I still got it. So now you get people coming up, hey, I'm talking about, oh, you botch and you don't got it no more. So that's how this match came about. At first, they do, do you think he did? He do because I seen it when he botched it against Pentagon. Do you think that that really happened? He turned to a storyline because I kind of I was dying when it happened. But I think it, I think it, he really botched. They just turned it into a storyline. Okay. But it was like they turned into like, a, oh, you're too old. You still got it anymore? Type of thing. Because he has to be on me perfectly every single time uh-huh. when he botched the Arabian moon song. When you. Sit on the rope and flip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And plus, he don't do it like, you know, they had the ramp that connects to the ring all the way to the ring, not to the floor. So exactly. That could have been an issue as well. <laughs> but uh, who came out? Somebody came out. Pentagon came out. And he was like, come on, hit the moonsault. Come on, I dare you hit the moonsault or something like that. So, you know, he's distracted. And then I think um, Sam Guevara hit something. She hit, he hit like a roll up or he hit like a like a kick or something like uh-huh. it was like a simple move and Daniels lost mm. and then uh, the Dark Order came out and Why? they okay. want Daniels to join so you know uh, they try to get on the mask then Daniels cause it, not Daniels not Kazarian no Kazarian Scorpio Sky comes out and then the Young Bucks come out and then they all just beat up the, the other guys from the Dark Order like, and Daniels actually does the BME, so I guess uh, that's his redemption. Other Who than knows? other than like the vignettes he had in the bag, I'm still not that impressed with the Dark Order. Yeah, them as a team, I'm not, but I can understand what they're trying to do. And I've been hearing rumors of they've been trying to get somebody to be that evil leader. It um, was me, Austin! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, it depends on who they get to be that new leader. Uh, to see if it if it works out with what they've well, been doing. Well, I know who I know who is not going to be. <laughs> well, yeah, we know we know that. Uh, um, Lucha Brothers, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix taking on the Brotherhood, the American Nightmare, Dustin Rhodes, yep. and Cody. Yep. Accompanied by the new coach, Arn Anderson, the enforcer. I hate I hate I hate that, but okay. Uh, Why is he a coach? Not even why is he a coach. Why is he a coach and a manager to Cody Rose? Like of all I people, that was, huh? Of all, honestly, I can understand the coach thing. Be like, okay, imagine if Derry Young, instead of doing the Bob Backlund gimmick, when he had when he had Bob Backlund talking about, so we're gonna make yeah. Derry Young great again. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, if he had like a coach, to be like. Then I could see that get me working better on a young guy to try to push him, but when you yeah, got yeah, but not Cody like the almost seventeen year vet or a fifteen year vet. Yeah, and I'm he like he's a coach. And he's he, he's a Rhodes. Yeah, but and then like I don't know. You, last week the the coaching that Art Anderson was doing was stupid. He was like, "Hey, Cody, hey, he's gonna jump for you. Uh, put your knees up. All right, coach. Like that's the that's the type of uh coaching that he's doing for Cody. Yeah, he don't need that. Yeah, so it was like I wouldn't mind our Anderson being a coach or a manager, but not to Cody, one of the biggest stars, if the biggest star, star in AEW, and that's Chris Jericho. So it was like that. All right, but I anyways, um, they won. Uh, Gold does hit his finisher. I don't forgot what it's called, but the I don't know what he calls it in, in AEW. Oh, okay, but yeah, they they leave, 
And then MJF comes out and he cuts a promo. And uh The final reckoning. Like, All right, I, huh? The final reckoning. That's what it's called. Okay. 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 I thought they would have called that the crossroads as well because, you know, they brothers and they it is kinda like a cross the little Yeah. I don't even know what he used to call it in WWE, but yeah. But yeah. MJF came out, cut a promo. And at first, I thought Sean Spears was coming out because he was like, I give you to the count of 10 to come out here. <laughs> you have 10 seconds before I come down there and I beat you up, okay? So 10, 9, and he's going to start counting down. Then uh, DDP came out. So, yeah. DDP actually cut a weird promo for a second. The start of it was, I'm DDP. You can follow me at DDP, Real DDP. I do DDP yoga. I was a so-and-so world champion. I'm a Hall of Famer and all this. Okay, now, uh, MJF, you suck. And that was that was like it. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. So, uh, MJF said, all right, I'm, I'm not going to fight you because you're 60 years old. But uh, <laughs> he called out the blade. He, right. <laughs> he called out the blade, the butcher, and the bunny. And they came out and they uh, beat him up. D, uh, they beat DDP? Yeah, and then it's one thing I don't like as well. Dustin Rose came out. That's understandable. But then QT Marshall came out. The jobber came out to help DDP <laughs> against <laughs> against MJF, his man, his uh manager and and other people. Mm-hmm. But anyways, next week they're having their bash at the beach episode, right? Oh. Uh oh. And uh it's, it's gonna be uh I think it's the Blade the Butcher and MJF versus QT Marshall, Dustin, and DDP. Oh, I'm about to say who's the third man? So yeah. DDP is actually gonna wrestle in AEW. Oh and Lord. It's kinda like what DDP this wrestled is not the first match I would have brought him back in if at all. So it's like when DDP was wrestling at uh <laughs> when he was wrestling uh, in TNA when it first came out like oh lord <laughs> that's why he can at least take both now he's like 60 60 what 61 62 yeah but he got the DDP yoga I, I guess I just hope it ain't like Macho Man when he fought it was him and uh, AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy versus the like, Kings of Wrestling oh yeah it's like uh, that was not good <laughs> but yeah but yeah um Jurassic. They have that whole ordeal, and then they go and then they they come to commercial. Then it's Jurassic Express versus your favorite tag team, the Best Friends, uh, <laughs> and Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy, the best part of that, because I hate the Best Friends. He definitely is, though. He is. Yeah, Chucky, Chuck Taylor, and Trent. I don't like. I can't stand them. But go ahead. But um, yeah, I was like during the match, he had like a big spot where like. He went off. Not even like the sloth. He's like something happened where somebody slapped him or something. He turned from the sloth to like a, a actual active competitor. I'm gonna do a toe pay on you with my hands in my pockets. And then he got back in the ring, did the thumbs up, and they did your favorite spot, the hug spot. Oh god, <laughs> yo, and that camera zoom out? Yes. I hate him. come on, bro. Y'all didn't know y'all y'all gotta y'all gotta be better. Y'all gotta be better. But uh in the end, Jungle Boy Pin Chuck Taylor for his first win ever in AEW. So, you know. That's right, because the, the, the rankings reset after 2020, correct? No, that was his first win, period. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's 1-8-1. He's because so. I, I thought they mentioned that at the beginning of 2020, that the, the whole... Uh, yeah, they do. They reset, be- but he's still 1-8-1 one, one overall. Gotcha. Well, yeah. Um, but then I think they said next week it's I think it's what Jurassic Express versus Chris Jericho, Santana, and Ortiz. Oh, so, that'd okay. be interesting. And then I think this may be segment of the the best segment of AEW so far. I feel over. Hold on, now you know the celebration for the large champion was a great segment. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. This segment All right. was... Okay, so... if you, I'm going to just recap for last week if people didn't see it. Jericho said he's going to give Moxley 49 
uh, percent of Inner Circle's profit. If he joins, he's going to give them one of the most expensive cars in the world. They're going to be a team, the dominant force. All right, this week, uh, Moxley comes down, and he was like, you know what? I thought about your offer, and yeah, I'm going to join the Inner Circle. So he takes off his, his jacket, and he has the Inner Circle shirt on. So they're all celebrating, and he was like, yeah, you are a mentor to me. You're like a brother to me. And uh, it would make sense for us to dominate. I wouldn't want to dominate with anybody else other than these guys. And so, uh, you know, they're celebrating. They're, they're celebrating for like five, maybe six minutes. They're celebrating straight, drinking a little bit of the bubbly and all that kind of stuff. And he was like, and when he cuts them off, everybody was like, oh, he's going to turn on. He was like, no, uh, I want my car. He was like, oh, yeah, okay. Give him the car keys. And then, you know, everybody's leaving the ring because the show's over credits are rolling and then he was like uh one more thing Chris uh I was just playing I was kidding I I don't want to be your tag team partner I want to team with y'all throw the beer ball over his head and then he did a pair down the ship to Sam Guevara which flipped him inside out and then get out of the ring so he got the car and outsmarted the inner circle so uh, you gotta watch it that's why the that's why the segment I would go back and watch is that segment of the whole show. I'll have to probably watch that segment then also. Check it but, out. Um, cause, cause I think everybody thought that everybody knew he wasn't gonna join. Well, I thought what was gonna happen, I thought he was gonna join at the end of the show and then leave it to be able to watch the next week and the next week at the beginning of the show one by one he he destroys each member until he gets to Jericho. That'll be kinda cool. Like how Austin did, uh, when he did DX when he when he yeah he scribbled did, or like how The Rock did when he beat up, <laughs> he beat up every member of the McMahon family that yep. same night. Yep, that was great. Thought, thought I was gonna do something like that and leave it to the imagination of you know. Do we ever get storylines like that anymore? No, no, so we like don't. They, no, no, no like part they of join or something, and then we go to the next week to see what happens. We have never done that in a while, dude. I wish they would have did it here. They would have just, I wish they would have just left it to the next week. Just, you know, so we have more content to work with for the next week. But, You're right. You know. But I'm sure next week, though, he's going to destroy that car. I'm sure. Of it. Oh, like, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. That's, <laughs> that's going to hurt. I, that would be a good segment, though. That would seem like something John Mark played do. He's like, you know what, brother's car, I don't want it. So. All right. So, what do you give AEW? Who wins the week? AEW or NXT for the first head to head battle of twenty twenty? Um uh, that's actually a hard question. I didn't even think about it until just now, literally. Um I would give it entertainment value. I would give it to AEW just because of the first match, the Cody match and then the ending promo. But the women match was not good. And the segment with MJF wasn't good to me. Uh huh. And the best friends match works. Gotcha. The middle of NXT to me just didn't. It didn't get me. 